why did I set it up like that? <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey, guys. Mark's back. We haven't done a review in a long time, admittedly. Yeah, it's been a we, bit. we swear we are working on that Fri Freddy vs. Jason yeah, review. FBJ is going to happen. We swear. Obviously, there's been a lot of hype towards the Candyman new film being produced. And also, after doing that video where I talked about how just how cool this paper trailer for the new Candyman trailer was, Mark finally convinced me to watch the 92 original film starring Tony Todd. Yep. Tony and, Virginia Madsen, who and, I was very fortunate enough to meet on the set of Dead Rising. I got a great photo of her and my daughter at four months, who was, uh, I ate my daughter in that movie, so that was a fun time for all of us. It's different from what I'm expecting, just because we went through a complete and utter tirade of all of these corny, cheesy, enjoyable for the most part, slasher flicks, and then Candyman comes around and it's not like those. It also gets kind of lumped in with them a lot too, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't have that feel of a slasher movie like no. any of the, no, the other in the, like their ilk. Well, yeah, because you're expecting a group of people to eventually slowly mm. be picked off one by one. Uh, the deaths that get talked about and kind of showed, which is like mm. the Ruthie Mae one, which is based on a real death. Like the death they keep talking about in this movie where the, the, they come through the wall and into the room and all that's actually a real kill that happened an actual way in which people were murdering people yeah in the project it areas. was a real thing that happened yeah this movie is set in Chicago's Cabrini Green and they filmed it there there's actual gang members in the movie they got shot at apparently one of the production <laughs> fans got shot uh, at generator got day. shot I read as well I would not want to have been on that set. I would oh, have wanted be, like extreme hazard pay. It doesn't follow normal conventions no, of slasher it's... films. The soundtrack by Philip Glass definitely awesome. does not. It's a very, very unique soundtrack in terms of what the film is. It's this orchestral score. You're not getting any of it's these. It's like orchestral. It's choral organs. Like it's so cool. And that whole din 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 yeah, the starts from awesome. this. It's different in a cool way. There's different aspects in terms of how they address the whole idea of what Candyman is. And even by the end of the film, I'm still not clear as to what he is. And I actually enjoy that. It's, it's not spoon feeding you. It's not holding your hand. You are meant to try and interpret some of these aspects yeah. for yourself. A different kind of horror film. It's one of those psychological Ed Edgar Allan Poe kind of romanticizing. Yeah. He is seductive. Like he's kind of pseudo-sexual and be my victim. It's very deliberately sensual. So I, would give, I would give props to the sound department too. Tony Todd's voice is always booming. They I added this I love the first time of, you hear it when he's off camera. It's uh, ethereal kind of like. Yeah, like a spectral sort yeah. of presence in his voice. And it's it chills you the instant you hear it. And yeah. every time you do hear it throughout the film, it's always working towards just scaring the bejesus out of you. Mm -hmm. That I enjoy that aspect more than some of the visceral gore. Like some of the gore in this is just like, bah! Yeah. I feel edgy for edgy's sake, but that's not because of the director doing it. It's because of Clive Barker. He's just like a very gore centric <laughs> sort of writer. Honestly, there's, I, it actually, it's one of those movies I always remember there being more gore than there is though. Like in my head, I remember more gore in this movie. Like I saw this movie for the first time when it came out in 1992. Well, I guess when it came on video, because I watched it at home, I would have been eight, I guess, when I saw this movie, maybe nine. Um, yeah, yeah, I watched a lot of fucked up shit when I was a kid. I've watched it many times since. I, I watch it every couple of years, and every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, there's, there is less gore. And then by the time I feel that way, then they kill the, uh, the doctor and he's like spitting blood everywhere and the wrenching it out and it's like oh yeah there, there it is this is what i'm remembering i was gonna say earlier i like the fact that there's there is a reading of this movie that Candyman isn't real and that she mm. when the Candyman bitch dude hits her in the head she gets a concussion and because of the fear she had and because of everything else she basically loses her mind and she's killing all these people and i kind of like that the kill happens and you see her holding the weapon it's like oh wait is she possessed? Is the Candyman yeah. real? But he keeps appearing, but then they show footage of her. The, the thing that breaks him, it is that the baby like, doesn't die, and she's apparently in that hospital for a month. So yeah. somebody's and, feeding that baby. Yeah. And apparently they're feeding it blood. And I, I kind of, again, I like those little aspects that it just 
variates it from what we're used yeah, to in it terms of it. it. And considering this came out in 92. 92. So it's that kind of dark, shitty It's at the time, too, when horror, horror. <laughs> was not very well appreciated. It wasn't as well liked anymore because the whole fad of 80s yeah, horror yeah. was gone. We were seeing different changes, like with Jason Goes to Hell, which was just weird but then we also had <laughs> new nightmare. nightmare again like kind of a, a new take it's not something for everyone but it's trying to differentiate yeah. itself from what we were just so used to with such copy and paste not risky whereas this film is a massive risk in terms of what it's trying to do not just in terms of how the film is portrayed but also a little bit about what the classism is talking about yeah. too which obviously jordan peele's remake will talk a lot more about yeah I but i think he's it's, the right guy to do the, mm -hmm, the remake true uh, and, and nita costa seems very interesting and yes just choosing that paper trailer and and what she's got doing i'm really excited for the remake mm -hmm, me too but and, and this this film kind of did it without being this like a, gets a lot of flack uh the horror noir documentary the on shutter they talk a little bit about it and how like the message gets muddled because candy man is haunting black people and watching it again i tried it's to think about that white. but i was gonna say um if you accept the idea that the real life dude that calls himself candy man that hits her in the head is the guy that castrated the kid and is the guy that's that killed the, the chick that that's the part that weirded me out and the is, most and is so if he, if that black guy killed those people. We've got black on black crime, but that's real. That's not Candyman. That's not the, the mythical creature. The only people we really see, other than the, the urban legend that's around Candyman that he obviously talks about feeding off of, but we only actually see him scaring the shit out of Helen and the people he kills in her life. So I think that maybe it, people look into some of that too much, and I'm kind of hoping Jordan Peele does go that way because I think this movie is ripe for that. I think a British story originally written by Clive Barker set in Liverpool directected by a British guy who decided to move the story to Chicago and Cabrini Green and bring in to that class it, system yeah, and, and, also and talk, like, make it more for American audiences. Yeah, for an American I feel audience. it's a kind of an amalgamation of the idea of what she said at the beginning of that the, in an area that's just ridden with poverty and crime and murder that they are turning just regular day murders and they're Basing it off of this mythical yeah. creature to kind of insinuate the fear that is actually very prevalent in that area. And then at the same time, it's also the idea of just mainly just white people being afraid of these areas and yeah. then making their own superstitions and their own fears of these areas and turning what is a classism problem and turning it into this mythical sort of yeah issue and i actually kind of I, I like that this movie isn't hammering it like considering we saw certain we've seen a lot of films in the last little while that their message is before the actual film like black yeah. christmas that piece <laughs> of shit that cool. movie is all about its message and its message is terribly done this film doesn't try that and i think that's what i like about it yeah. is that it's it's portraying a story it is using an element that is known but it's not nailing you on the head with it. It's yeah. actually just like, it's interweaving it through the story. It's a horror film with some kind of brains and yeah, some it's, kind I, of it's smart. smarts it's, to it. It's it's a nice, It's it gets called a slasher a lot and I get it, it is a slasher, but it's also like an intelligent, kind of societally relevant gothic horror. These like movies being gothic to... movies, I do not love the Candyman series in general. The yeah, first I was gonna one's say, great. I've heard the, the second one is suck. the second one, which is directed by Bill Condon, who went on to direct like the Beauty and the Beast movie and like some of the Twilight movies. I'm pretty sure he talks in the commentary on the second movie about how much his movie sucks. It's not great, but it's not bad. The third one is uh, almost unwatchable. Uh, <laughs> Tony Todd's the only really good part of any. Yeah, he's definitely of yeah, any he, of the sequels. He was very enjoyable. He's in this great. Film. In this. He's so, so. I mean, it, this well, is this is the one that did him. Well, apparently, made this him is his famous. favorite film that he's ever done. Yeah. Is this know, of course, look how cool it is. And he has bees in his mouth, which is fucking insane. That, yeah, I know that, we had like a dental thing but that's to block still, it, yeah, but that, he still put, yeah, he put live bees, bees in yeah, his mouth. No, I couldn't do that, even if it was getting paid that much. Virginia Madsen's like, allergic to uh, wasp venom too, so she was super paranoid. Oh, I would They're all be. crawling all over her face. But oh. they use like baby, like they were only like 12 hours old. Again, it doesn't hold your hand too much to the point where it is a little bit ambiguous. There yeah. are some odd 
ease to it, but I still enjoyed it. So I, I personally, I would give this movie a five out of seven for me. Uh, I, I love this movie. I think it, this movie's fantastic. Uh, some of the messages do get a little muddled and they get a little weird and they get a little hard to interpret. And whether that's deliberate or not, I think it's it, it diminishes the film a bit overall. I, I, I think this movie's great. I think the soundtrack's fantastic. Tony Todd's great. The cast is great. Xander Berkeley plays a douchebag. <laughs> Big fucking surprise. Like I love Virginia Madsen in this movie. It's got enough going to it that I, I'm somewhere in between a five and a six. So because you said five, I'll stick. I'll go with a six. I will officially. Right. So you were right when you were trying to do it beside me there. Well, anyways, guys, that's our review for Candy Man. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Give this a watch. It's definitely yeah. a different kind of horror movie. It might weird you out a little bit. Really, in my opinion, the most terrifying thing in this entire film was the bathrooms. Yeah, because Jeremy, he was actually like cringing ooh. at the the bathrooms. I that hate they public do. bathrooms. <laughs> I hate them. People just all of a sudden forget all of the the, the fucking, ba fucking bathroom training they got man. as children, and then they're like, "Hey, let me just shit in this." And then leave it for the next person. And this, the bathroom in this was really and, gross. Like yeah. they oh. wrote sweets to the sweet and shit, <laughs> like peanutty gross shit on the walls. And it's not just public bathrooms either. That's like at workplaces too. That's well, a horror movie. That's a real life movie. Humans are disgusting in and, bathrooms. And on that shitty note, we're gonna end it there. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show Undergrads. It's been a while. But I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.